So now maybe it's a little un- easier to understand the differential. Because Adam picked his wife over God, that set in motion a proclivity to select a person over principle. In God, it's principle over the person. And since he's God, he would know which is better. But we were supposed to, as it were, in Adam, when faced with a similar issue, you're picking God over people because God picks principle over himself. He's above you. He puts the truth above his own name. You're picking him above you. You're picking him above people. The whole aboveness, the vertical, governing your choice. Adam didn't do that. He picked the woman horizontal. It's been that way in the human race ever since. That's the issue here. Even when we go to Bible class, even though we're saved. I've seen this even in my own church. People have no clue what the pastor's teaching. They buy into the personality. He could be teaching the alphabet. And because they want to buy what he says, they buy it. They don't understand it. I can't tell you how many people I know from my own church who have no clue whatsoever what that guy was teaching. None. Zero. They can mouth it. They don't understand it. Because to them, it was the person, not the principle. So they never understood the principle. They might as well have been sitting there like bumps on a log. They didn't absorb anything. They didn't learn how to think Bible. They can parrot it. I can't talk to those people. In fact, I finally got a, when, when left the church. When he died, there was no point in going back. The people didn't understand. Now, I'm sure some of them did. But I never met those. I only met the idiots. And they glorified him and made him into some kind of, I don't know, icon. And people do that with their pastors. It doesn't matter if the pastor's teaching right or not. They don't know. Because they're listening to the personality, not, not the principle. Therefore, that's why you get into all these little doctrinal wars that people have and denominations and all that. Nobody really understands the issues. Okay? They're all going by dear Dr. So-and-so and there. It's like so many football teams and, you know, this is our town and it's our football team in this town. So rah, rah, our, our team. So God is relegated to... Nothing. God doesn't matter. He's just an excuse that you use to justify whatever football team you want to say you support. That's hypocritical. But the reason why it's hypocritical is because we're going horizontal and we literally cannot understand principle. That's not how we want it. That's not how it it, it works in us. Because Adam selected the woman over God, so we select the horizontal over the vertical. And even when we're trying to look at the vertical, it ends up being all about the person. I have the same problem with people. They like me, or they dislike me, and my content, which has nothing to do with me, because anybody can say the truth, they can't understand that. So they value or disvalue what I say based on me. They can't analyze it for itself. 
If you're speaking the truth, honey, it doesn't matter what your qualifications are. What you're saying is true or it's not. It has its own value apart from you. The fact that you repeat it is beside the point. So you can be a drunk running down the streets of Calcutta, and if you say what the gospel actually is, it's still true. The fact that you're a drunk and an idiot is beside the point. But see, we humans don't value things like that. We have to go by the credentials of the person before we accept what they say because we cannot evaluate the content apart from the person. Because we're choosing the person first. Therefore, we do not develop a competence in analyzing the content because we're too busy looking at the person. And so we just buy or not buy the content based on the person, and we never learn the content. It's always the person. Now, God realizes this, and fortunately, you know, he uses this misplaced focus on the person at least get our attention. Hi, you're going to hell if you don't believe in who? My son. Believe he paid for your sins. That's a person. And then you learn to value that person and you don't really understand what paying for sins was. You don't know what the cross was. You have no clue. Oh, but Jesus paid for me. And you like that idea, so you believe it. It happens to be true. There happens to be a lot of content behind it, but you don't know what that is, and you don't even care. Somebody did something for you, and you want that. So it's hypocritical. But it does happen to be true. Notice how God is still putting principle in front of person. You're believing to say it. You're believing because you like it. Sounds good to you. You really don't care about Christ. You have no clue about what it meant for him to pay for sins. You feel a little guilty about it. And you're afraid. And most of all, you believe it's true. So you believe it. But you can't. In all honesty, if you were honest with yourself, you can't say you appreciate it. You don't know anything about Jesus Christ when you believe in him. You can mouth certain things that somebody might have told you, but you believed in the person who told you. You really didn't know if it was true or not. Something about the person who told you was credible to you. You had no ability to discern that it was true. You had no ability to even discern what it meant. You don't know what pain for sins is. You don't even know what your sins are. You never met Jesus Christ. You have no idea what it was. Not when you believed in him, you didn't. But you believed because it sounded good because somebody said it to you. And you believed what that person said because you believed in that person telling you. Now, they could have been telling you a lie. You wouldn't have known. See how God takes advantage of our sickness? And, of course, that sickness continues right after being saved. We go right on listening to the people we want to listen to. And we don't really have any ability whatsoever to discern if what they're telling us is true or not. We like them, so we believe what they say. And we have no ability to tell the truth from non-truth. Otherwise, Windows 10 would not be selling at all. Everybody's lying about it. Well, not everybody, but all the pundits sure are. Nobody's paying any attention whatsoever to the license agreement. There's no integrity at all. But people are buying what they say. Oh, it's Microsoft. It must be good. Really? You're not paying any attention to facts? No, they're not. 
they want to say rah rah X. Same thing in Christianity. Or maybe it's Judaism, or maybe it's Baha'i, or Islam. Nobody's paying any attention to what the content is. They don't even know and they don't care. It's all the person who's around you, who's saying something, and you like that person, so you're going to agree. So all these people sitting there under their imam or their rabbi or some pastor with a great big mouth full of teeth and, oh, you know, we got to like this person. Doesn't matter. He's not telling you the truth. Even if you know what he's saying is wrong, you still go with him? Yeah. See, there's no integrity here. It's the exact opposite of what God's doing. He puts the truth above his own person. We're putting the person above the truth. So much so that we can't even discern what the truth is, and we don't even want to know. So that's why the hypocrisy is so bad. It's an inability begotten from a preference for the person because we like that person and we want to believe X. We want to believe a particular person because we want to. And so we don't develop the ability to discern. And even when we have the ability to discern, we cover it up in favor of some person. So we put the person above whatever truth we can discern. And that's hypocrisy. And we're aware of it at some point in our lives, at times. We're more hypocritical more often than we will admit. Because we're hypocritical even about ourselves, especially about ourselves. And at the end of our lives, we, we get, you know, frustrated. Yeah, that's why. Because the truth cannot be, you know, what do you want to call it, ignored. And you have a happy life. Sooner or later it catches up. Sooner or later, whatever is false has its own, what do you want to call it, ramifications. And you can have all the money on the planet, all the health on the planet, all the goodies on the planet, and you will be unhappy. Now, God's out to show how you can have a lack of all those things. And as long as you know him, then you're happy. And you're miserable at the same time because you don't have those other things. The two sit side by side, but yet you're happy when you are miserable. The converse is never true. If you don't have the truth, you cannot be happy. You will fool yourself and lie to yourself because the hypocrisy has to get bigger and bigger and bigger to cover it up. So that even when you're trying to pretend to be happy or you've got everything, you're miserable. And God is out to show, you know, hi, this is why I created Truth Be Free. So that you can be miserable and yet be happy in it. With me. This is why the cross is the cross. Now, I, I know that that's the answer. I haven't gotten the distance yet to actually have that same attitude I've got some of it though and surely you've got some of it too so you can see that the antidote to hypocrisy is somebody to keep learning and living on Bible and it seems hypocritical when you're doing that because you don't feel good you don't see it it doesn't look like it's true you're just asserting well God says this is true so it must be true and in a way, you're doing the same thing. You're asserting based on the person. But he vindicates that. And you come to see that it's true. And he wants it to end up so that you're, you're believing it because you see it's true, as well as because you see him. Because he puts the truth above his own name. He wants you to get to that same place so you can see what it's like for him to put the truth above his own name 
so that you're not stuck with having to believe the person just because he's the person. He wants you to see the truth for yourself and love it the way he does because you see it yourself. Now, I'm not wholly there yet, but I'm starting to get there. But that's the antidote to integrated hypocrisy. And it's necessary because in the eternal state, the big problem with it, the thing that I hate the most about it, is that people are going to die clueless to this. They still won't know the truth because it is the person above the truth. And that's why it stays in the eternal state for them. The really the hardest, the worst thing about the eternal state is that peop if you end up being a king, you mature, you will love the truth because of what it is. And you will love God because of who he is. And those will be your two compensations. That's how it is for him. That's, that's why he wants to even be God. Everything else is negative. The people who you will inherit, they still have no clue about the truth. They're going to learn anything that's true through you. They're going to admire you. They're going to they're going to be hung up on you. They're your groupies. That's the only way they can learn truth. Because down here that's the option that they chose. They don't want truth for itself. They want it through a person. So you end up being the person through whom they get any truth at all. And your compensation will be that you can at least give them some truth. Each day they'll learn a little bit more truth. But in their minds, the truth still isn't as important as you are. You're the representative of Jesus Christ to them. They're going to be hung up on you. The truth will be secondary to them always. I, 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 that, that, that sounds like hell to me. But the kings become kings because the truth becomes first to them over and above the self, over and above existence, over and above the person. And I tried to sort of quickly explain it by showing that Christ referred to himself as third person, as son of man. That kind of thinking. You wake up in the morning because of the doctrine in you, not because of yourself. It's not being unselfish. You have a, I don't want to call it. It's not being unselfish. If anything, you could argue it's more selfish. You live for the truth. You live because God wants a thing. It's the, it's the besidedness of those two. The truth itself and God himself. But the truth itself actually has to take precedence. Because that's how it is in him. So that's how it becomes in you. And because it becomes that way in you, that's how come you get to maturity and you get crowned king. Because the kings have to regard truth above their own person, just like God does, in order to be kings. Everybody else is not going to think that way. They're going to all be looking at the person first, and the truth is second. That's what Satan's doing. It's the primary difference between God and Satan. To God, the truth is first, and that's why it has to be free, and that's why it has to be free to be bad, and that's why he throws himself down before the truth, which is Psalm 138 too. David laying down on the threshing floor, realizing that that's where the Holy of Holies was going to be. Prostrate. That's what he's doing when he's, he's saying Psalm 138 too. Totally shocked. That's what God does. He prostrates himself. Over truth be free. And it really is. It's the biggest sacrifice there is. Satan can't understand that. And frankly, part of, partly I can't either. I just wish I were dead all the time. 
But I can't go back to person first. Oh, I'm a person. I matter. No, you don't. Why would you even want to? The truth is way more important and way more gorgeous. Why would you want to live and, and assert yourself as being important as a person? Oh, I matter. Why? Why do you even want to matter? So I'm developed that much, but not finishing the course yet. You see the difference? In the eternal state... It's just like the small-mindedness of people down here. My mother, my brother, my father, my sister. They go to a church because of the, the pastor is, you know, they like that person. And they want to keep that friendship or that connection. It has absolutely nothing to do with whether he can teach the truth or not. My mother goes there, so I go there. My mother's a Catholic, so I'm a Catholic. It has nothing to do with God. God doesn't matter to people. People in my own church, they just liked the guy's personality, the way he talked. They didn't care about what he said, so they don't understand what he said. And he got most of it right, just so happens. But the purpose of studying under a teacher is to learn the teaching, the truth first, not the teacher. Who cares what the messenger is? The person doesn't matter. The message matters altogether. But see, if you never grow up, you never learn that. That priority never gels. You pay lip service to it. Everybody pays lip service to the truth. But God actually throws himself down before it. You say, well, but God created the truth. Yeah. And he could have created the truth in a thousand different ways and look way he did it. Made as hard on himself as possible. Why? That's what Satan doesn't understand. And frankly, at times I don't either. And the answer is real simple. He loves truth be free. Okay. I don't, you know, seems totally masochistic, but that's the way it is. Now, am I going to get there? I don't know. Are you going to get there? I don't know. But in the eternal state, it's just two types of people. The kings, where truth is first. And of course, you know, in the higher ranks, it'll be truth is more important than the person. But the lower you go in ranks, in society, the more it's the person over the principle. So that at the bottom of society, it's all about... Me, 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 and person, 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 and principle is at the bottom. And they'll be happy. That's the way they value things. But it's going to be a narrow happiness. And they won't know Christ. Because his whole character is the opposite. So you see, the hypocrisy has this eternal future to it that results in the person being more important than the principal. And that's a choice, and that's part of freedom too, and that's part of truth be free also, and that's how it shakes out. Now where do you want to be in that? What's up to you? Where do I want to be in that? I gotta finish the course. Because I, I can't go back to Egypt.